Abby, Martin, and Danny, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Let's get the, the meeting underway. We have a couple of folks on Zoom and Jennifer's here. Oh. <laughs> Roll call, please, Jen. Mike Dawson. I'm here. Tom McDonald. Here. Jennifer Finley here. Jim Molitaire, Carol Lankford, Danny Matt here. Bing Matt, James Steele Jr. Yes. Martin Charlo. Mm -hmm. Len Titi here. Lenish Trahan and Bing is with Forestry. He said he spoke with you. Oh, okay. James, will you give us a prayer? At Kulin Sutton, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this beautiful homeland that we have. And you've given us the awesome responsibility of making sure it's protected for our families and our generations to come. We ask for your special uh presence over families that have lost so loved ones, particularly Naomi plant family, comfort them, guide them, give them that special presence that they need at this time of their loss. And Kekul and Sutton, we ask that you would uh, watch over our meeting today, guide us, give us wisdom as we make decisions for our people and our three tribes. We thank you for, for our families. We pray for our council colleague, Jimmy Molitaire, keep him safe as he goes through treatments today. Lemlemsh, who's who's cooking men? Thank you, James. We do have minutes from June 11th. Daniel, go ahead. If I could get a correction, please, uh, page two, where it talks about Red Shield, if we'll just go ahead and remove that line. Thank you, Daniel. Mr. Chairman, I have, I have one, um, one minor change um, on the bottom of the page where I'm talking about the um, social service issue. Um, I, I really try to keep names out of it, okay? So uh, on this particular one, rather than use, using Maylin's name, I would just like to um, use a third party and exchange and change Maylin's, get Maylin's name out of there. Thank you, Lynn. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, James. Yeah, thank you. Um, the only change that I made, and I emailed it to Abby, was I added a little more information about the invitation I had from DC and just basically stated what, what it was and more 
forwarding the invitation. So. Thank you, James. Motion by Tom to approve the minutes from June 11th with, uh, with corrections. Second by Jennifer. All in favor? We are unanimous, the seven of us. We do have an agenda for today. Any additions to that agenda? Tom, James. Jennifer for executive. If that's, um, I guess I wonder what uh, I'm hoping. Um, we're looking to have a an executive discussion toward the end of the day about the letter. I didn't know if you guys wanted to talk about it at all already, or can we wait till then? Okay. Letter. The stupid letter. No walk-ins? We'll uh, entertain Tom's issue first, and then James, and then we'll go into executive for Jennifer's. I can't like to catch you, right? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I finished my diet donut. <laughs> mm -hmm. I brushed some of the sugar off. I just want to give a trip report for Monday. Um, I went down and met with the, I guess you'd call it the high level managers of wilderness and natural areas from the U.S. Forest Service. Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, National Park Service. They have a week long, actually it's almost two weeks long, training each year, and I've done it before, but I just wanted to mention that I was the opening um, speaker, and then and I mentioned again the importance of restoration of our people to the landscape, and those examples of um, collaboration and good neighbor policy and all those things. So um, it was a good good meeting. I went longer than I thought. They had to actually pull me off the stage. <laughs> Once I got going, I couldn't stop. And it was, and then I went into the McDonald thing and did a couple of stories and it was, uh, anyway, I made it back here in time for our health committee meeting. So that was the important thing. So just wanted to give that update. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. James? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just need to request your uh, help with um, getting the lands department to call um, Homer Crow Real Family on that property. We showed interest over here. Um, he called me yesterday stating they haven't been contacted by the lands department over that. And we showed interest in that a month ago. So, I and he said that the family is going to put it on open market since they haven't next week so he's called me to let me know of that so it, it'd be nice if we i mean they just give him a status update or something so i mean yeah. i kind of get tired of us feeling like we're stupid because you know it's this issue it's you know issues that every one of us have brought up different issues and it seems like we all get the same kind of thing whatever department we're dealing with so anyway if you could I don't know, call him or call, have them call. You know, I, I'd appreciate it. Just a little nudging of some sort. Thank you. I, I, I got the same frustrations. And I'll, I'll stay on it. <laughs> yeah. It's right here. Yeah. Just right over here. And it ties in with our, our holdings here at the complex. So anyway, 
Thanks, James. Um, we'll go out of what, Jen? I have one thing. Um, there's no council Tuesday because I don't have enough agenda requests for next week, so, but there is council Thursday because SKC has like a summer program and the kids are coming over that afternoon or I would have had everything Tuesday. So. so no no council Tuesday. And then remember holiday Wednesday, so no work Wednesday. Juneteenth. I won't be here. You won't be here. I'll be in surgery. Motion to approve the agenda, Mr. Chair. Motion by James. Second by Tom. All in favor? And unanimous. Thank you, Abby. And uh, we'll go out of regular into exam. And uh, Lands is up first, Sarah Urban. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I would uh, really appreciate the opportunity for council to have their own internal work session, talk about uh, reorganization and what we want to see and what outcomes we'd like to have, um, and do that as soon as possible. And then we can get to the issues that are all combined. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Come on up, Tara. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Travel Council, Mr. Chair. Um, we are going to start on page two. Um, this is, um, I'm requesting an approval for the highest bidder for the um, fireworks sales of 2024. We had two bids, and so we're just looking for approval. Any question? Mr. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, James. Yeah, just curious, you know, all the ones that we used to have all the um, time are kind of out of the business now, I assume. Yeah, kind of. Um, Rogers, who used to be um, kind of one of the main persons, kind of moved towards um, Kalispell Way. He has a few, I think, in this area, but he tends to stay more um, north now. Okay. I make a motion to approve. Motion by James to approve the, these are two bids for different spots, right? Yes. So option second. one, right? Yes, option one. We should motion to approve option one, Mr. Chair. Second, motion by James, second by Tom to approve option one. All in favor? Uh, unanimous, I believe. All right, thank you. Um, the next one is on page three. Um, this is Nova Vento Entertainment. Um, they are requesting um, permission to film. Um, they're going to be at Oak Haven Belgium Ranch, which is right by uh, Mission. Um, it's on a fee property. However, they're going to be utilizing not really on the property, but south of it. It's on Trump tribal um, property. So they're just looking to see if they couldn't use um, permission to be kind of on that because they're going to be using drones and cameras. The other location is Mission Dam. Um, so it would be 100 bucks a day, um, not counting the permits, the conservation permits. So they were just requesting from June 17th to the 21st. Obviously, the payments would be the $500 fee for the days. Um, they do have insurance, and they'd have to provide the conservation permits. And I know that they have talked with um, Whisper, so I think they're just getting that group permit on where to be and getting the maps of that locations. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Tom. Do we, um, when do you expect the information from Whisper? Hope, uh, hopefully today, this morning. 
Oh, could we see that then? Yeah, I mean, I can come back this afternoon or when it gets in. I would, I would want to make sure that we're inclusive of whatever. Yeah. They want to do at Mission Dam, and and when you say the other property, what is it? Is there a lease on it? Somebody so so here, I can kind of, I know this is, I could have it on there. Who's the leasee? It's not somebody. It's actually. Oh, it's vacant. Yeah, I guess the only sensitive thing would be Mission Dam, so. But yeah, I will um, I'll get with Whisper and I will get that information and bring it back. Not a problem. Um, the next one, I'm kind of squeezing this one in. <laughs> um, it's not on here. This is actually, um, it was brought in through uh, Tribal Lands. This is the Pandel. Um, uh, the, I think they were just trying to get the contract agreement um, to be approved. This was the new Pandel contract, and I have right here. Explain it. Good morning. Um, so this is Pandel. We brought it in for a land committee. Um, we are ready to move forward with the contract. Stu Levitt was able to negotiate the jurisdiction to the uh, U.S. District Court of Montana. And he's okay with the terms of the contract. Um, Kenji with IT is okay with the terms of the contract. Uh, we have constant and grants uh, reviewed. So I'm here for official approval due to it being a sole source contract and the amount that the contract is written for. Questions? We've seen the information on Pandel. Two other times. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. You guys have through Lance Committee. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Any questions uh, about it? The, the major question was getting uh, the approval uh, through contracts and grants. Yeah. Yes. The contracts and grants, and then to make sure that the the venue for any legal action would be Montana. So yep. since they've gotten that. Motion by Tom to approve Vandell. Second by James. All in favor? Lynn? Daniel, Matt, or Martin? You're unanimous. Approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Am I and not talking then. into this? Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And I'll be back, um, if not this later on this morning or this afternoon, and with the little whisper, the con conservation permits. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Morning, Greg. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. So today on on the agenda is a request, a uh, resolution and a letter addressed to the superintendent uh, requesting the reimbursement from Section 7 Water Compact activities that have taken place between the beginning of the fiscal year, October 1 and March 31. You might recall in one of my prior meetings here, we've asked for a reimbursement on a on a periodic basis, I'd like to get that more tight and compact, and we're, we're looking to do this on a semi-annual basis going forward. Let me advance. This is a recap of the Section 7 activities that have been accomplished so far. You'll see the top of this report indicates it's between 10-1 of 23 through 3-31 of 24. These are all Section 7 activities. The total of those activities year-to-date is 8986 Six ninety six and twenty one cents. So the resolution is the authorization uh, for the compact funds to come from the BTFA to the tribes to reimburse for that amount. 
the letter behind it is the letter to the superintendent. This follows the same form as the previous one, which might, you might recall is at $10 million and some change. My objective is to get caught up to this on a quarterly basis and maybe to begin getting advanced funds as the water compact activities begin to spool up and we get on track to do that. Hey, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Greg, for bringing this forward. How, when you seek reimbursement, how how long does it take them? Is it is that it? Is there a timing issue? It could be uh, three days to two weeks. It depends on um, the availability of the superintendent to accept and then promote and sign. Uh, there's other avenues if uh, Shane is not in his office for them to reach him digitally. So the expectation is about three business days to up to two weeks, depending on that. So, in in I agree with you. I think it should be as frequent as possible because as they start laying out more expenditures, um, you know, can we afford to front that? And um, or something goes haywire in the whole process, then we're stuck with that. Um, yeah, I I concur with uh, increase in frequency. The best you can do, you know, um, I'd make the motion to approve. Oh. Oh, did he? Oh, I'd second then. Motion by Martin to approve, second by Tom. All in favor? And we're unanimous. Thank you, Greg. Thank you all. Have a good morning. Greg, can I ask you a question, Mr. Chair? Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, just a question that I often wondered. What are some of the ways that we could uh, study the impact upon the economy of this water compact money coming in? Is there a way to, you know, it, it'd just be nice with, I, I don't know, in my mind, it'd be nice to know what that impact is on our economy, you know, as it's coming in and we're putting out contracts and you know, all of this. Um, it's a significant impact, not necessarily directly to our membership or our tribal irrigators, but you know, primarily non-native non irrigators. But all of this construction work is, you know, it, it has an impact. And so mostly just to put a bug in your ear to, think of ways how do we measure it how do we capture that uh, economic impact upon the western montana economy um, you know i did have a discussion with the director down there in missoula patrick barkey the um uh, <clears throat> can't even think of the department he's in now bureau of business and economic research something like that and so not necessarily for you, I guess you to answer, Greg, more solely a rhetorical question. Um, just maybe thinking of what are some of the benefits, some of the negatives of knowing what this particular um, the compact settlement dollars are having upon our economy. So so I, I guess it's not necessarily an answer now, but just to be pondering it. And it's something I've been kind of wanting to see us measure somehow if i can reflect on on what you've asked jennifer is there a way to see what what uh, the this part of the packet is again on the screen we can certainly begin to look at that more deeply and and if i'm speaking openly i think that the um uh the Federal Reserve Bank did the survey of native nations survey based on 2019 data and we're engaged with Heather uh, Sobrapina to see what the next iteration of that might be. And I think if we're providing data and they're analyzing data and they're doing that and running that through a screen, that may help us uh, identify that. Within this packet here, I'd wanna draw your attention here to what the types of allocated services are being accomplished. Uh, there's some salaries and fringe that are associated with that. But in this breakdown here, the largest contribution, uh, we have uh, one piece of the puzzle here um, of some acquisition of land interest. And then I think that the biggest one here is part of the procurement in the Jocko delivery area. 
that 5.1 million really represents some of the materials that go into that. And it would be appropriate, I think, you know, in a in a more confidential arena to look at those contracts and see that we can do some analysis there. But this is a general by category and by by area of what's going on for section seven activities that are being accomplished. We can drill down a little bit, but I'd be looking to an out to an outside model to maybe get that impact. Does that make sense? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, you know, there's um, there's different models out there that can say this construction job, we're building a new high school, this location, what does that mean to stimulate the local economy from increased salaries, you know, spending at the local grocery store, buying local materials, that kind of thing. I think there's, there's different percentages. We could probably come up with some of these construction. The one that's difficult for me is the efficiency of the operation of the project. And so how we put a value on, on keeping bull trout, cutthroat trout alive in perpetuity in the Jocko River, whatever that might be, that is almost impossible to put a value on, uh, what that means to us. But I do see that there is, as far as the efficiency of the farm operation, so they're sitting there and they have 300 acres that they're raising alfalfa on, just say that, and they're sprinkling, and they're, they were pumping, they're paying an electric bill for and paying O and M charges to the project. Now all of a sudden they have more of a guarantee of water delivery because if you're at the end of the line, you never got water, or you're lucky to get it. Now that's gonna always be provided to you and it's a gravity system. Oh my goodness. And the maintenance goes down on that system. So long term, I don't know what, you know, how we measure that, but that's a that's a success of agricultural production on a landscape that's being served by that improvement or betterment of that particular division of the irrigation project. And that can, that's what we're duration of forever. And I don't know, you know, that's, what does that mean to the economy? Well, that means we're self-sufficient, where, you know, we can keep egg on the land and feed ourselves longer. I um, mean, you know, all those things, I don't know. That, that, that's what I'm always interested in, because that helped justify, to me, why we were doing it. Because we were taking that water that was being wasted and there's a value to that water, and we're efficiently using it for both fish and wildlife concerns and for egg production. And so it was a win, win, win. That when we were at um, the district meeting in Arley the other day, that that project was brought up, and the fact that it's going into pipes and going to make irrigation all of that more efficient. And the aspect that was brought up was that that wastewater has been going into the groundwater and it was the source of water in many wells. And so the, that economics has to be added in as well. The loss of wells or the added in uh, expense in increasing depth of wells and things of that sort. So that's all part of the same project. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, that's uh, a result of Bad land use planning. Um, that that uh, yeah that that's a, that yeah that's could be, but the you know we'll have that discussion actually later today. Um, or oh, maybe even this morning. The that there's a fix to that though, and that's a community delivery system of potable drinking water, and that's going to happen for early, you know, doubt in my mind. Inevitably, it's going to have to happen as it will in other locations. So um, there's a limit to the groundwater and uh, appropriate limit. And yeah, there's those shallow wells. Anytime there's a leaky ditch, there's been people that have developed shallow wells all along the mission front, not just our lead. Um, and those are gonna dry up and they're gonna have to go deep or figure out something else. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, that's just a potable drinking water issue. And I, yeah, it's minor in my opinion, but it's a good one. It's a good one to bring up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Len. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have um, two issues here. Um, Greg, so it was brought to my attention that the dire need budget has been expended um, until the next fiscal year. Uh, I'm not sure when the department head was going to bring that 
bring that in and, and address that. But if you can start looking at some options on how we could supplement that supplement that um, budget until because that's a, that's a very vital service that that um, we provide to the membership, and um, we got three four months left in the fiscal year, and um, if you can um, look at some options or just keep that on your radar. Uh, Yes, sir. Okay. And also, Greg, uh, where exactly are we with the um, low cost block um, um, revenue that that we received on, on where are we at with that plan? So when when we look at the at the dividend that was received from EKI, which was in November, uh, I'm I'm looking at 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 extracting the low cost block of power information out of that. I'm happy to provide a a comprehensive report on what I see and what the analysis, as well as to answer any uh, questions that council has as a result of that report. And I'm happy to schedule that time in the next couple of weeks at your at your discretion. You'd if you could, if you could do that a lot sooner, because we really anticipated on trying to get some assistance out there to the membership while you utilizing this revenue, and. Um, you know, here we are in June and uh, the summer months are going to be, you know, they're always um, challenging for everybody, you know. Um, but if we can um, um, get there sooner than later, that would be that would be that would be good for us. We would appreciate that. So thanks, Greg. Great, Greg. Would it be appropriate for us to slide into an executive and talk frankly about these two issues and then come out? What would your what would your what would you like to do? We can do that. Out of regular into regular. We we have um completed the process to advance Joel Claremont's platted system compact water application to pump out of Buffalo Bridge. I we we at Dewar were not at all involved in the lease arrangements. I didn't even know it was finalized. I have a copy of the lease though that, that he has an executed lease with tribal lands, which came before the council. Um, and I have the the final application that just needs chair signature because remember they're leasing the tribal water right. They they're not owning it. So when we submit this to the board, it goes under. He, Joel has signed it, and then the chair signs it. And then I, with your indulgence, I would probably just prepare a cover letter and sign it as the water rights program manager and say, we are transmitting this to yourselves. And um, and that's all I wanted to provide the council with an update on is that um, we, 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 we just uh, were ready to move that one forward. And he's, um, you know, doing his thing. And... Um, we're giving him a full water supply, um, 155 acre feet, so he can do full three full alfalfa irrigations of 25, you know, at the full demand for alfalfa, not like the irrigation project. So that's that's the Claremont thing. Um, yeah. You guys have legal this afternoon if it needs to be brought back up, or after you guys look at it more. What more do we need? Um, do, yeah, do I need direction? Um, in the um, yeah, so just on this application, I believe uh, Zach and others in our shop had eyes on it. So it has had legal review. So, yeah. All we need is consensus or an actual motion? I don't know that we need action on this. I, it was more of an update. Yeah, just process. Yeah, the, yeah. you yeah, just signed it. This. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. I, I do. Well, I, I, I I'm, do you, would you like me to schedule to bring the groundwater management area conversation back in one more time? I'll do that. Yeah. Um, I can go through this that. again since you have some absent council member. Right, in front of full council. Yeah. And and uh, we can digest it one more time. I'll put it with you. Seth. Twenty more years before he can retire, Seth. Twenty more years. Heard it here. I'm having fun. 
car. I mean, what else would you do, right? Thank you, sir. Can we go back into executive? Out of regular, back into executive. Len? Second by Jen. All in favor? Unanimous. Out of regular, back into executive. Um, the board has convened uh, over this last month to really talk about uh, a path forward. Um, and you know, we selected, the board had so recently selected and appointed uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Munson to act as the interim president uh, of the college. And uh, certainly looking at the uh, position description of the president and the advertisement of that president position as we as we advertise and and go through the the selection process for the new president of Salish Kootenai College. So, sure. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Tribal Council members. Thank you for <laughs> um, thank you for inviting us to meet with you today. I, I just wanted to talk really briefly about this transition period. We want to make it as seamless as possible. We want to ensure that, um, you know, that Dr. Munson has the keys to the car and is able to continue operating, metaphorically continue operating the college, and that um, that there are no there are no gaps in um, in the operation of SKC as we move forward. Um, we're looking at short term stability. And I think Jim is going to talk more about advertisement and the PD. Um, but as we enter into this interim period, we're also looking at the long-term vision. Um, this is an opportunity to really look forward, um, not just in the short term, but in the long term as well. Now, in review of that position description for the president, it really is going to allow us to uh, really um, intentionally and deliberately think about uh, the leadership qualities of, of the next president. So we hope to have that here um, approved uh, in very short, a very short time period. Uh, the board is meeting tomorrow and hopefully we can go through that and finalize the position description or update uh, the position description and get an advertisement out as quickly as possible. And again, uh, you know, the, there was some concern about uh, the authority, decision-making authority during the interim process, and we wanted to be very deliberate about uh, um, placing an interim president that has that authority and that uh, they had that uh, delegation of duties and responsibilities of, of a president during this period. We also expressed... Um, some change expectation as well, you know, as we as we continue through the uh, this interim process. Uh, some of the things that they're working on is or recently worked on is the uh, organizational change that moved the HR program out from under the vice president of business affairs and under the president. So we'll see some organizational change as the new president is seated uh, to restructure uh, some. Some authorities and responsibilities of that of that uh, of that leadership team. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we continue to improve uh, the delivery of the HR service to our faculty and staff, um, and we made that pretty clear uh, to the interim president. Um, they have, and, and there's some notes in the in that report, but there there is. There is some uh, documentation about increasing the amount of supervisory and leadership training uh, ongoing over there. And we wanted to make sure that uh, that type of service really continues and improves over, over, the, over the period and you know, throughout, I mean, moving forward. 
We look very seriously at the exit interviews that were conducted when we had the former HR director and the vice president of student affairs leave. Um, we uh, did a thorough assessment of uh, the findings and um, the this move of HR is one of the ways that we have responded to those findings to um, help improve um, administrative function within Salish Kootenai College. I think the board feels that uh, with these subtle moves that, you know, it's really going to provide a, a better service to the to the faculty and staff. Uh, I think that was a that was a sh shortfall, you know, looking looking back just the availability um, or the ability of HR to provide those opportunities to the faculty and staff that would help reduce or or limit the, the, the employee supervisor uh, conflicts that we've that we've all seen. So hopefully that will improve, right? Uh, for those folks to have that ability to uh, to deal with those conflicts uh, early and and take care of them at the at the lowest level before they move into uh, grievance type of issues and termination, right? Eventually. So hopefully that will help uh, remedy some of that conflict. And I think that uh, I think we're very optimistic about where the college is right now. Um, I know that change is different, but uh, I think most of us are very optimistic about our current position, uh, the increase or the potential increase in housing that will be available over the next year or so, with the with the new construction of uh, some housing facilities over there. Uh, which you know, which again would bring uh, an increase in employment opportunities. Also, an opportunity for increased students. What what we have seen over time is that, as we've looked at all of the factors in increasing student count at SKC, um, a persistent uh, issue that has that we have faced is lack of housing. Oftentimes, students enroll. They couch surf for a little while. They look for housing. Um, it's unavailable, and then they drop out. So, you know, again, we're examining what the issues are for um, for students, for staff and faculty, examining it carefully and, and moving forward. So, I think, as as uh, Jim said, um, this construction of housing for um, for students and and Many of our students are non-traditional students, so they don't need a dorm. They need this kind of housing that we, they, we will be providing. I think it's a, a very positive move. Yep, so with that housing, we're looking forward to increased enrollment, of course. Um, there, there's also um, an outline of those uh, certificated uh, programs that that are available and are becoming available. I think that there's scheduled to be another uh, welding uh, welding training at at SKC in the in the coming months as well. Jeff, how many units of housing? Forty two, I think. Cool. Yeah, and I think that there's some discussion about uh, you know the broader picture of what's what housing is needed and continue to to add as we as as we move forward yeah um is there anything in particular that you'd like to talk about in the in the report or any questions as at this point and this was outlined or this was framed around the um around the charter you know questions so and also address, addressing issues that that council has brought to us in the past about. <laughs> I always forget to do that. Thank you. Push the button. Um, uh, responding to uh, opportunities for um, for youth and dislocated employees and apprenticeships in in the trades. So um, we're responding to um, to those issues of concern that that we've examined and, and that we've heard. Oh, for your sake, Tom, I just wanted to reiterate that Jim is not following, uh, the board is not following the report as Sandra had delivered it, but 
highlighting the parts they think are important. So go ahead with your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just uh, you were engaged in a strategic planning. Where you're at with that? And or were you included as a board? Uh, we we were uh, initially uh, broadly right. Uh, that 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 is not complete yet, and I think it's scheduled to complete later this fall. So I think there's still opportunity to participate. And I think last time we were here, uh, we had mentioned that there's opportunity for tribal council to also be engaged in that effort. It's ongoing, scheduled to be completed probably later this fall. Mr. Chairman, um, Vice Chairman McDonald, um, we have had the initial review that included uh, input from each of the community meetings. So we're synthesizing that information and including it in the, um, including all of those comments as we look at our strategic plan for the future. Go ahead, Tom. Well, the one thing that I brought up uh, that wasn't there but previously was trying to be inclusive of at least having one tribal member on your strategic planning team, and there wasn't any. Is there somebody? Yeah, I don't know. Probably that leadership group, which are your descendants at this point. We'll look at that. Again. I'll follow up, Tom. I'll run over there and check on it later this afternoon. Get back to you. See who the team members are and how many tribal folks are on that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I just seem, I mean, it just seems to me, you know, if I was, if I would want to have, you know, some tribal membership involvement on the high level of the planning team. Um, just me, you know. Well, I say that quite often. Just me. I'm not speaking for any of you. You can say it if you want to, but it just seems like a yeah. Uh, common that administrative, that administrative team was led, you know, by Sandra, who's a who's a tribal member, right? She uh, wasn't on that team. Yeah. Go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah, I agree with Tom. I think the majority should be tribal members. I mean, that should be <laughs> to perpetuate. I mean, part of the mission of the college is to perpetuate our culture. So it would make sense to have that the majority of those people leading the effort be tribal members. And I think even if you pulled in tribal members from the community with expertise in the realm of education, and I think of someone like Julie Kajun or, you know, we have some really fine educators in our community. Some of them are retired, who would probably love to have a say in how the college is shaped and how it can serve our community. You know, maybe even Kevin Howlett, who was a former I mean, I don't know. I'm just throwing these names out there. I don't know if they would be interested, but I'm just saying we have really stellar community members with a strong background in education. Um, and so I'm just looking at, um, I guess, your appendix. So I was happy to see that you addressed um, interaction with tribal departments. And I guess my um, take on that is I, I would like that to be strengthened because I think there's a missed opportunity with tribal employees with ongoing training. And I think it would be very mutually beneficial for SKC and CSKT to have ongoing professional development training because it would provide a great service to the tribe, like for leadership training or supervisory training. I mean, there's so many different areas, um, you know, so many things that we need, but also it would increase the Indian student count for SKC and benefit SKC financially to do that, to provide some of those trainings for the tribe. And, you know, there might be other trainings that I'm not aware of that certain departments would have certain needs. Like, um, you know, I think about the social work department, it has a super high burnout rate and we always need more tribal members with MSWs. And the, you know, if there was an MSW program at SKC, 
there's such a high need in the tribe for more social workers, uh, therapists, people in the mental health field. So I mean, just really making the partnership between, and then you would be able to add, SKC would be able to add students, provide service to the tribe, but you wouldn't have to find places for people to live because you would be working with people who already live here. James, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. My question is, <clears throat> um, at some point, it looks like the foundation was dissolved or the structure of the foundation, right? It became a program or a department within SKC. The college absorbed the foundation. Can I ask why that was done? It's uh, primarily because of the uh, the status of the foundation and its inability to continue to um, get donations and the requirement of the um, the corporate structure type of thing, right? It's a tax a tax thing. I mean, it's a uh, I don't know the vernacular around the, the, the situation, but it's really the um, the foundation was making more on interest of the endowment than they were in new giving. So I think with the inability to fundraise at, at a large level, it really changes the tax responsibility or liability of the foundation. So it was important that we pull that back just because of that, or they would be responsible for a, a tax liability. So... You know, uh, so I see on the your um, what is it the audited financial statements for the year ended June thirtieth. So I see um, sixteen million four twenty seven six sixty six. So that looks like um, on the column referring to the uh, foundation. So it says net beginning end of the year sixteen million four twenty seven, transfer of net position sixteen million four twenty seven. Then it moves over to the to the college's side of the the uh, the audit. I'm kind of wondering with that sixteen million four twenty seven moved over to the the college. How are those individual funds being managed? You know, because I know when it was the foundation, you'd have somebody donate money and it's specific for this scholarship or it's specific for that scholarship. And I'm wondering how is that being handled? The other thing that I know the foundation used to do is part of, uh, you know, uh, donor relations. What has that disappeared? Is the new entity or the new program dealing with that? Because you know, there's a lot of work to put in when somebody donates money that you filed, that they get a tax write-off, all of those different things. So I'm kind of wondering, I'm assuming that wasn't completely seamless moving into a department, but... So yeah, the kind the, of advisory, advisory group, the former foundation board is still intact. Okay. The name has changed, right? The function of the advisory it's an advisory group, not a foundation board. Okay. The funding is very much restricted. Uh, most of that, if not 90% of that, is very restricted to the, the things that you talk yeah. about, providing scholarships. Uh, and that's still intact. So there's still a mechanism for people to make donations. Yes. It's just the not the foundation anymore right? it's not it's not called the foundation it's a board and you know under under the old system um the college actually uh was responsible for uh much of the executive director's salary so uh, it was pretty much connected anyway yeah. and they're just managed by a, a, a board of directors the foundation board but they, their name has changed i mean very much the same people involved in that uh, yeah, it's still intact. It just moved into a program. Yeah, I guess I think I would just suggest that, you know, at some point, you know, maybe it might be, who knows, to 
reinstitute that at some point when it seems more viable, I guess. But I know that was definitely a struggle for the short time I worked there that it was, you know, trying to get that, you know, bigger dollar donations to make the foundation more self-sufficient and not as relied on the college budget, you know, to supplement the executive director's income and such. But yeah, I appreciate the, the response. Um, Councilman Steele, SKC has just hired a director to manage those. What is it? The what's the the, the investment? The financial piece. I'm blanking on the name. Sorry. What is it, Jim? So it used to be the foundation. the foundation. And what is it now? It is the the, the foundation department or program or whatever well, it is. We have a new staff person that will direct that. Yeah, the, well, so chairs, part of it is called development, you know, the basically development director, um, getting all of that, those donations in and uh, going after those big dollar donations or even smaller donations, helping coordinate the, somebody wants to create a new scholarship for in memory of, you know, those kind of things. The other thing I know that the foundation was handling was, you know, all of the memorial seats there at the um, Charlo, uh, Arlie Charlo Theater, you know, and I don't know, just kind of wondering about those things. I know my family bought one of those, a lot of us have, so I'm wondering if that's still going on, those kind of things. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Ch Councilman Steele. We'll bring that to the development director. Your questions? What else, Jim? That's about all I got, Mr. Chair. Well, one thing I noticed is that um, our tribal kids are a minority in terms of the tribal students at the college now. I, I wasn't aware of that until I saw the, the graphs in the report. Our, our kids are 42 percent of the tribal uh, membership and first descended, I guess, with 34 percent from other Montana tribes and 24 percent from out of Montana tribes. But that was interesting. Our our tribe's kids are the more minority of tribal people there. Um, so you mentioned you're doing some vocational stuff or expanding beyond just the welding program that NRD is sponsoring. Is there any building trades going to happen or? In the planning process, for sure. Yes. They want to continue that or, you know, uh, grow that building trades program. So that would be like um, prepping up for journeymen, electricians yeah. and plumbers and carpenters and the plan or the, the idea was to develop some kind of a, a warehouse facility where you can do all of that, yeah. right? Plumbing, electricians. Trades building. Uh, trade, yeah, like a trades building. Yeah, be wonderful. Um, side drywall, roofing. Yeah. Still in the works for sure. Mr. Chairman, uh, Tribal Council members, I believe that um, uh, Dr. Munson is in conversation with uh, Salish Kootenai Housing Authority, and they're working collaboratively to ensure that there's um, real-time experience that comes out of this building trades program. So uh, Housing Authority has a great need. We have an interest in training tradespeople, so um, we're negotiating that now. Can we revisit that enrollment issue? Is that how you, you read it? 42% of the 67%? The graph that's on yeah. 67, it, it, it separated out the, the tribal, a disc of just the tribal folks, and 42% yeah. are ARC, and 34 are other Montana tribes, and 24 are non Montana tribes. Isn't that true? That represents the 65%? 
And so our, our kids are, our, our students are the minority in, in tribal folks. Yeah, yeah, still a minority. Just, um, Mr. Chair, just reflecting back, it, it goes more than just housing, Jermaine. It's it's tribal lands department, uh, tribal maintenance. They don't have anybody, um, the largest housing component, but the buildings, you know, we're, we're going to contractors and they don't have any tribal members in their businesses doing work for us all over. Yeah, so it's, It's not just housing, it's lands does a lot of stuff. Well, the interesting thing was, is that, you know, that old PACCOR group, they're all retired out now. So, you know, there's no, I don't know who that journeyman carpenter is that's a tribal member that's still kind of functioning right now other than Steve Samsel. That's it. Go ahead, Bing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, I'm Jim. Were all uh, TSK team members that graduated from high school, were they all, for, all offered scholarships to the college? I I can't. I don't know. I think that they're available, right? They're available. I don't know if they're like a formal offer. And if you look at some of the um, graduation announcements or graduation, the school when they do announce um, uh, those students, it provides that uh, CSKT tuition waiver uh, it, with their announcement or, you know, in the program. So uh, they're available, but I don't know if, I don't know if that's a specific uh, announcement or notification to each, each of the tribal member graduating seniors. I don't know how that works. Right. If they're if they're sent a letter, you know, uh, with an announcement notifying them that they are eligible for a tuition waiver. And the the interesting thing that we did, the the previous policy was that you were eligible for three years after high school or something like that, three to five years. And I think that we've uh, reduced that time limit when folks would be eligible for that uh, tuition waiver. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering because when I went to St. Ignatius uh, graduation there, I didn't see some of them members with the SKC offer on on their um, name. You know, when they were graduating. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know if um, if those folks that expressed interest in SKC they were noted on that uh, and uh, the program or every graduating senior was offered that, right? I don't know if there's some interaction or interaction between the, the seniors that uh, showed intent to go to SKC would be offered that. If that makes any sense. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Um, I'm sure this has been part of the college discussion in the past, but the hospitality industry, has there been any like short courses or certificates like for placement of people like Quitechnic or the gaming casinos or retail for that kind of thing? Yeah, the last that I've heard or even spoke about that is that uh, there was an expression of interest between Quitechnic and SKC to develop the hospitality training. The training was developed and offered and they we had very lim limited participation in it. Councilman McDonald, uh, tribal health has expressed an interest in having that customer service, you know, that variation of hospitality, but customer service training. And we're, um, we brought that to the attention of, um, the board brought that to, up in our meeting. Go ahead, Tom. 
Yeah, okay. customer service training is something that I think we could probably mandate for all of our tribal employees, uh, starting from here on down, and uh, you know, make it a requirement or something. You know, uh, condition of employment, and uh, if the college would facilitate that, I think it would be wonderful. Um, we're in dire need of that. Um, but I, I see us expanding more and more into um, tourism and, you know, kind of a commercial thing. We're trying to really in, in, increase and improve tribal member businesses. And so that's all part of that. Um, it just seems like there's, but it could be some way. So didn't the resort require that? Are there new and higher hirees as part of their onboarding? training or anything i don't know if it's a requirement for them now or where they're getting that customer yeah. service training for their staff at this point mm -hmm. right yeah other questions anything else from the board Jennifer? I just want to thank you for coming in and thank you for following up on the concerns that we've had. I think that really goes a long way. And, um, you know, because I think wherever we start from, we can always get better and improve. And that, that I think that's really, that's really wonderful. And I really like that you guys are going to, um, uh, reformulate the job description for the president and update that and bring that back. And I re I also really look forward to seeing uh, some tribal members on the strategic plan committee and, and the housing. That's exciting too. It's exciting, you know, I mean, developing those housing, seeing more students at the college. And we will check on that strategic planning team to see if there's any CSKT members as part of that. Yeah. Thank you all. Good to see you. Uh, Tara's back to give a quick update and then go an executive with Melissa. Come in, Tara. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tribal um, Council, Mr. Chair. Um, just coming back with the update regarding the film um, from the NOVA. Um, they did contact Sadie um, and Whisper. They paid the 2800 for the permit, for the conservation permits. So now I'm just looking to see if we can get um, an approval for the request for them to film. Um, so in, uh, in regard to Whisper, they didn't think there was any conflict of uses up there? Nope. Okay. Yeah, everything turned out really good. Motion? Motion by Tom to allow the filming. Taken by Jennifer. All in favor? We're good. Unanimous. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Spread that enthusiasm. That customer service right there. And with that, we'll go out of regular into executive.